Musée de Beaux-Arts by W. H. Auden. Musée de Beaux-Arts was written after Auden had spent time in Brussels, Belgium. The museum Auden visited is known for its prominent collections of the old masters, particularly painters from the Netherlands. Musée de Beaux-Arts appears to record a viewing of a selection of Pieter Bruegel's works. This is the painting which is being described in lines 5 through 8 of the poem, Pieter Bruegel's The Numbering at Bethlehem. Bruegel sets the story of the nativity, not at Bethlehem, as the title suggests, but in a Flemish village in winter at sundown. As he often did, Bruegel treats a biblical story as a contemporary event. And, as he often did, he references particular political events, in this case, the severity of the Spanish administration in the southern Netherlands. As seen from above, the snow-covered village stretches beyond the pond, as far as the church, People are going about their daily tasks, sweeping the snow, building a cabin, crossing the pond on foot, gathering around a fire. Children are playing, throwing snowballs, skating, spinning their tops, sledging. But almost obscured in the right-hand foreground is a man with a large carpenter's saw, leading an ox and an ass, the latter bearing a woman wrapped tightly in a blue mantle. Without attracting attention, they pick their way between the carts of beer barrels and bales. These are Joseph and Mary, who have come to Bethlehem to be enrolled in the universal census order by Emperor Augustus. The gospel episode is associated with the payment of tax, and indeed, to the left, the crowd is pressing in front of a tax gatherer's office installed at the window of the inn. That we must search for the couple among all the commotion of the town seems to be Bruegel's point, and Auden's. The holy event is obscured by vulgar living. Greatness in suffering and achievement is ignored. This is the painting which is being described in lines 10 through 13 of the poem, Pieter Bruegel's The Massacre of the Innocents. According to the Gospel of St. Matthew, after hearing from the wise men of the birth of Jesus, King Herod ordered that all children in Bethlehem under the age of two should be murdered. Bruegel sets this story as a contemporary Flemish atrocity, so that the soldiers are wearing the distinctive clothing of the Spanish army and their German mercenaries, possibly as a commentary on the behavior of occupying Spanish troops. Shortly after its creation, the painting came into the possession of the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II in Prague, who was offended by the scene. The slaughtered babies, therefore, were painted over with bundles, food, and animals, so that instead of a massacre, it appeared to be more of a general scene of plunder. Bruegel's painting requires us to read each episode one by one. In the background, immediately below the church, a father tries to smuggle his baby to safety, though the mounted soldier on the bridge behind suggests that he's unlikely to succeed. In the left background, a soldier urinates against a wall. A soldier herds women into a house at the extreme left. Another soldier carries a baby, one of the few that have not been changed, out of a near door while against the wall of the same house some neighbors seem to be consoling a grieving mother. Moving to the right, a standing woman grieves over her dead baby, changed to an array of hams and cheeses, lying in the snow. A couple seem to beg a soldier to take their daughter rather than kill their baby son, who's been changed to a goose or a swan. A huddle of villagers console or restrain a father who might otherwise attack a German mercenary in striped hose who guards a dead baby, here changed into a bundle. A seated woman grieves with her dead baby, who's been changed to a bundle, on her lap. A group of soldiers stab with pikes at a pile of babies who have been changed to livestock to ensure that they're all dead. Women run off in horror as another mercenary stabs a baby who's been changed to a young boar. A soldier stabs at a baby changed to a pitcher, cradled by a seated woman. At the extreme right, soldiers are forcing entry into an inn. One wields an axe and one a battery ram. Three climb at the uh, shutters and one kicks down a courtyard door. Reading across the foreground, right to left, we see a baby changed to a bundle that was torn from his mother and her daughter. And at the left foreground, another sergeant pursues a fleeing mother and child, a group not painted over, though partly lost when this side of the panel was cut down at some point in the painting's history. We see in this painting, at least in its original form, the dreadful martyrdom, which the poem describes. 
where the dogs go on with their doggy life and the horses are oblivious to the tragedy. This is the painting which is being described in lines 14 through 21 of the poem, Peter Bruegel's Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. In Greek mythology, Icarus succeeded in flying with wings made by his father Daedalus using feathers secured with bee wax. Ignoring his father's warnings, Icarus chose to fly too close to the sun, melting the wax, and fell into the sea and drowned. In this painting, his legs can be seen in the water just below the ship. The sun, already half set on the horizon, is a long way away. The flight did not reach anywhere near it. Daedalus, his father, does not even appear in this version of the painting. Icarus dies alone, unnoticed. The plowman, shepherd, and angler are mentioned in Ovid's account, who says, They are astonished and think to see gods approaching them through the aether. But this is not the impression the painting gives. The shepherd in this painting is gazing into the air, away from the ship. The angler takes no notice. Those on the ship must have seen something amazing, a boy flying with wings. But the crew has places to go, things to do. Icarus attempted to do something extraordinary, and yet neither his attempt nor his failure merits even ordinary notice. No one can be bothered. There is a Flemish proverb which may have influenced Bruegel, and the farmer continued to plow. Thus, the painting's intent may be, as Auden's poem suggests, to depict humankind's indifference to suffering by highlighting the ordinary events which continue to occur despite the unobserved death of Icarus. Thus our suffering, whether by a holy birth, a sanctioned slaughter, or a legendary fall, goes unnoticed. And the fact that we are suffering in ignoble obscurity makes the suffering that much more severe and tragic.